Welcome, this is Damien, Senior Application Engineer for SolidTech. Uh, today we're going to look at creating this CAM profile using the wrap command. In addition, we're also going to talk about uh, how do we make incremented uh, angle divisions around a cylinder that are accurate. And we'll have a quick look at the very sketch command too. So let's start by making this cylinder. We're going to extrude a 100mm diameter cylinder. We're going to do the top half first. And I like to um, create a link value for the diameter. That way it's easier to select when we make an equation. I also like to create a new plane that's parallel to draw my 2D cam profile. So we're going to draw the flattened profile of my cam onto this face. What's also a good idea at this point is to create some construction geometry to draw my uh, cam profile about. So the length of this needs to wrap completely around my cylinder 360 degrees and it needs to be precise. So for that reason we're going to use an equation and we're going to make it equal to diameter times pi which will be equal to the full circumferential distance okay so I know this distance is exactly wrapped around the cylinder every time we're going to add one more construction line to make easier to define and we're going to draw our profile something along the lines that. So we want four, so again we could dimension these by saying these are a pi times the diameter divided by four, but because it's symmetric I can say this one it's going to be on the midpoint of this line. And each of these is going to be either equal or parallel. So all that's left to do is to dimension the other size of my cam profile. Okay, and we have a sketch we're ready to use. Okay, so this is going to be wrapped around using the wrap command. I like to use my shortcut menu up here. Type in wrap and find it. We're going to use this sketch and we're going to wrap it onto this face. So we have three choices either to emboss, deboss, or scribe. Scribe just as a split face, and it does depend on whether it completely covers the geometry or not, we're going to deboss ours by 12 millimeters. It's going to cut the underside of what we haven't modeled. Okay. Then we're going to add our fillets on. I'm going to add them on to all of my corners using the fillet expert. And we're going to make the second half of this. So, quite simply, I'm going to create a mirror of this body, but I'm not going to merge it because I want it to be rotated by 45 degrees. So, again, the move copy bodies command can do a rotate of this body. The easiest way to use this is to grab the handle for rotating it, type in the angle you want to change, make sure. If you don't want to copy it, you uncheck the copy. And then combine bodies will let me combine these two bodies together to create my solid. So almost finished with the model, let me the basic geometry. All we need to do is pop our shaft on. I fill it and then the text. Okay. Okay, so to do our text, we're going to do that in a very similar fashion. All our divisions, we draw on the plane, we create our construction geometry, and we draw it round. Okay, instead of doing that, what we're going to do is actually have a look at doing some alternative design. So I'm going to draw at this time on the bottom we're going to create something a little bit more interesting but using the same type
type of command. So what I want to do is do a series of slots that follow a sinusoidal curve. So again we want to make sure this wraps all the way around our model, so it's pi times diameter. And this time we're going to use a sine curve to describe this. So we're going to say, we're going to have a equation driven curve. So the equation is relating x parameters to y parameters in its simplest form. So cosine of x between 0 and 315. And we can see the little curve it's producing. Obviously that's not big enough, so we're going to multiply that up by 8 times and I want it to be a little bit softer so we're going to say 0 0.1 times x2 ok and then all that's left to do is to pop this on my model dimension where I want it to be and also control its orientation. Okay, so all of this is going to be construction geometry. What I'm really interested in is drawing a little slot. So I'm going to draw a slot down the bottom. It's going to come straight across and this is going to be my little cut. And But what we're going to do, we're going to say that that center point is marked by my sign sweep and we're going to do a dimension to control its distance ok so this dimension again how many of these slots do I want I'm going to say that I want 30 around the whole circumference so we're going to do the same again we're going to say a global variable times pi divided by 30 and I know it's exactly spaced at 30. So very easy to do. Just want to make sure that that's on there. That's great. And we're going to do a wrap. Of this feature onto this face. So this time we're going to deboss it just by one millimeter. Okay, so that's great. So what we can do at this point in time is we can come into here, we can choose this item here, say well, I want a linear pattern, but instead of choosing a distance, I'm going to choose this dimension, because this dimension controls the position of my slot along my sidle sidle sweep. And we're going to pattern that, and we're going to click Vary Sketch. So Vary Sketch is going to use that particular sketch to go through there. And then all that's left to do is again add an equation to say I want th this to be spaced at diameter times pi divided by 30. And I want 30 instances. So as you can see we can create quite elaborate patterns quite quickly. And if we wanted that to maybe be 36, then it would match more precisely what we're looking at. We'll have them at each degree. So again, all we have to do is say, divided by 36, and the little pattern, divided by 36, and finally 36, and let it rebuild. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.